Hey there, everybody. It's Julie Tache from Homes with Cache. It is 12.59. I'm going to give everybody a few seconds to check in with us for our 1 o'clock Mobile Mondays broadcast. Um, while I'm waiting for everybody to jump online, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background so that you can understand why am I here talking about speaking. What does a real estate agent know about speaking? I don't know. Realtors do it all the time, right? Well, um, before I got into the field of um, real estate, which was about 15 years, 14, 15 years ago. Prior to that, I was in broadcasting for approximately 20, well, it's been 25 years this year. I covered the Carolina Panthers for their first 17 years of their existence, and I have been on radio, television, done a lot of broadcasting, and a lot of public speaking. So that's my background. Of course, I use that with my real estate business. For me, I find it extremely helpful to do different kinds of speaking. And one of the things I want to let you know is it's important not just for getting up in front of a crowd. If you want to do something that entails going public, doing public speaking, that's great. But also there are other applications for you. For example, how about Facebook Live? Let's do one of these. I'm sure a lot of folks watching do Facebook Live or do other types of things. So things that you can do for your business that entail speaking, talking to people one-to-one -one or one-to-group. Something else to think about is, do you work with perhaps developers or other groups, people that you have to get up in front of and do some kind of a presentation? Or you may be in a rotary or another group where you do speaking, or even where you just get up and do your 30 or 60 second commercial. People find this to be terrifying. Yes, it's terrifying. So what I'm doing here today is to give you some basic information. So I'm just gonna start off by saying, we fibbed a little bit when we said top five tips. You know, everything on the internet will grab you in if it's top five. Well, I'm gonna give you way more than five tips. I'm gonna give you a lot of tips that you can use for your business. This is stuff that applies to you personally and you can take it outside of your real estate business as well. So let me just talk about um, some of the things that I have found over the years that have helped me. But I'm gonna start with a quote from good old Jerry Seinfeld. You know, he, he talked about how fear of public speaking ranks higher than death. He said, to, this means to the average person, if you have to go to a funeral, you're better off in the casket than doing the eulogy. If you are one of those people, welcome, and I'm talking to you. But even if you're somebody who's pretty comfortable, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one or a group environment, I think there will be some tips here that can give you some help. Again, um, just go ahead in the comments below if you have any questions as I go along. Interrupt me, ask me questions, whatever you want to do. This is a pretty casual environment here on Mobile Mondays. So according to the book of lists, the fear of public speaking is number one fear in the majority of people. Above death and disease, 15% of Americans have a dramatic fear, and people turn down opportunities because of their fear of speaking. So we're going to talk about things that are public speaking, and like I said, this could be public speaking, video marketing, video email if you use it. We're going to cover a bunch, and we're going to go pretty fast. So if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up afterwards, shoot me an email. My email is attached, or put a comment here. So. Regardless of what it is you're doing, your success really depends on your ability to communicate effectively. And by effectively, I mean where somebody wants to actually listen to what you have to say. Well, whether you're doing your video, video marketing, your Facebook Live, you're running a meeting with your staff, you're selling something like a house, you're making a presentation, uh, motivating your coworkers, or just communicating one-on-one, -on -one, you will get way better results if you can speak persuasively, smoothly, and intelligently. Wouldn't that be nice if everybody did that? I know. And there was a study back way in the 1960s at UCLA, and it supports that old adage, which is, it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. So that's a lot of what we're going to work on here today. It's the hows. Okay. So I want to touch on one thing. The words that you use when you are communicating only really impact in, in terms of the audience perception about 7% of your entire message. Voice quality 
the tone, the rate of speech, the volume that you use. That's 38%. How about 55% body language? Your gestures, your facial expressions, the posture that you use, that is 55%. So let's talk about that for a little bit, right? Oh boy, I wanna have a nice perception of posture, gestures. I talk with my hands. Anybody else out there talk with your hands? Raise your hand. I talk with my hands. That is how I do it. Um, number one tip for getting over nervousness, Raquel, I'm going to get to that a little bit later, so hang tight. We're going to get into that. Um, one of the things I want to talk about, if you're doing something like this on video, I'm using a split screen right now. I have my notes on one side of me. I have Facebook here on the other side of me, so you'll see me look around to see what's going on. Mark, you do? Awesome. <laughs> That's why you're here. So I'm going to start with number one thing, fear. That's what we talked about. Jerry Seinfeld said it's the number one fear. Why are you scared? If you can figure that out, that will really help you a lot. Um, if you can talk to a friend, a lot of you have a coach that you work with. Maybe you have a therapist. Everybody should have a good therapist to figure out what that fear that underlies that you had a little trauma that you maybe had. Something that happened, maybe it was in second grade. I know I had something that happened in third grade where I got in line and got in trouble and got yelled at. And those are the things that stay with you. But somewhere down the line, maybe it was a parent or a teacher who criticized you for speaking up or speaking too loudly or you shouldn't be talking right now. Those are the things that go into our subconscious and actually stay with us. So if you can Go drill down to that fear, be honest with yourself, then it's something that you can deal with. If you feel like somebody's making fun of you, get over it. I know it's easy to say that, right? But let me tell you what, nobody cares right now about if I make a mistake, if I say the wrong word, if I fluff. It's okay because you just have to be yourself. One of the things that we're looking at is you're so self-focused when you're doing a speech or a presentation. We're so worried about getting approval from the audience. Oh, please like me, please, please, please. Guess what, doesn't matter. What's important is giving your audience a great experience. We have this inexplicable need to be perfect. Am I perfect? Is my hair right today? How am I doing? It's not about perfection. It's about how you communicate. When you're working with your clients, what are you? You're a teacher. This is putting yourself in the role of teacher when you're speaking, right? The audience is the student. That's what a good speaker really is. So stop, forget about perfect, forget about approval, but there's one place approval is great. If you're speaking to a bigger group and you have one person in that audience giving you this, that's who you're talking to. That's your audience right there. That's the person. Somebody who's giving you a positive affirmation will help you to feel good and relax. And if you're speaking in front of a group, by the way, plant somebody. Put a friend or a coworker out there. And if you're looking around and you're not finding a friendly face, there's your friendly face that you can talk to. Next thing is preparation. If you're speaking, you need to prepare. I can get up and talk for 20 minutes on any subject to any group because I've been doing this for 25 years. If you have not, then you need to adequately prepare. If you don't know your material, if you think you can wing it, you are probably wrong. If you are prepared, it makes you a better, more polished, more professional speaker. And in front of the audience, you can get nervous, forget what you have to say, lose track of your stuff. Then you're embarrassed. Then things tumble backwards. It doesn't give you the result you want. How about you're not so sure what you're saying has value? Be confident in what you're talking about. Sometimes we under-deliver or over-deliver in this attempt to cover our insecurities. Don't worry about it. You're going to give them the information that you know that you're prepared about, and then it's going to be more comfortable for both you and the audience. And here's one more thing. We're too busy comparing ourselves to somebody else. What if you're doing like an Inman or a TED Talks type of a thing and there's other speakers who have gone before you and they were fabulous and now you're comparing yourselves to that person. It doesn't matter. You have to be, you know that all you be you dog, you have to be yourself. Don't look at your mentor, don't look at a colleague, don't look at some public figure that you wish you were more like. Don't use that self-deprecating monkeys in the brain thing that tells you how horrible you are and you could do better because guess what, I'm doing this one time. 
there's no do-overs in this video, right? So I'm just going to do my best and communicate as well as I can. By the way, if I go really fast, it's because we're cramming in a lot of information. So um, just holler at me if you have a question. The purpose of your presentation is not just to convey information. It's to inspire and motivate people. Right? If you're talking to your team, you want to inspire and motivate. If it's an audience who's perhaps somebody that you are looking to have as a client, it is to get them to want to talk to you further. It's not just about the information I'm giving you right now. It's about, hey, I want you to contact me later because I want to work with you. Right? Personal stories are great when you're talking. I know I do this with clients all the time. Use your personal stories of things that have happened before. Oh, and we had this happen in our transaction a year ago. Here's what we did to resolve it, and here's how we had a great finish to our transaction. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you are doing a presentation um, and you like to use slides, keep them to a minimum and don't read them. Whatever you do, your audience can do that. And also... Remember to, again, shift your focus from yourself to your audience because guess what? They actually want you to succeed. When you're doing this, people want to be comfortable watching and listening. If you're in front of a crowd, they want to like you. So don't think that they have negative interests for you. They really want positive things for you. Um, it, it's also not your job to know everything about the subject. I'm going to cram a lot in here today. I'm by far not going to talk about the like millions of articles and books that have been written about speaking. It, you just want to be engaging and relevant, and you can always give more information later. And don't memorize your script. If you're a stand-up comedian or like you're doing a TED Talks and you have to be perfectly memorized, definitely. But otherwise, if you internalize your key points and if you forget something, it's okay. You can always come back to it. So when you are prepared, one of the most important things about preparation is about practice. Uh, read your, if you have key points or a script, read it out loud five times. Do it to an audience, a friend, a family member, somebody who will give you honest feedback, or just sit and read it to yourself looking at your video screen on your computer. You can see yourself or looking in the mirror. If you decide to read silently to yourself, don't waste your time because it's a total waste of time. You have to hear yourself say it. By the way, the way you sound is the way you sound. If you don't like the way you sound, you've heard yourself on a video, it's okay. This is who you are. Run with it. Go with it. This is you. Just keep working with your own voice. If you hear something you don't like, then you can practice to improve that area. So let me talk about one quick thing. Negativity. If you feel negativity from your audience, let me tell you what Eleanor Roosevelt said. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent, without your consent. So don't let them go there, right? It's in your mind, it's not them. And then the other thing I'm gonna give you, if you're talking in front of a group, for those of you who remember, Marsha Brady had to give a speech, pictured everybody in their underwear. If that's what you've gotta do, any of the tricks that you can use to relax yourself, you're gonna do that. Tyler wants to know a great way to prepare for a presentation. That's a whole nother speech. We could do it another Mobile Monday, just about where to find your sweet spot, how to get the information that works best for you. <clears throat> but I always say, start with your outline and your bullet points. Really hit the things that you have to mention in your talk. Get those down and then build around it the things that you think are relevant to make those points come to reality for your audience. Bring them to fruition through your examples. And that's a great way just to start off. <clears throat> Mark, I like the do your best and forget the rest. That is, that is absolutely right. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Worry about if you're proud of yourself at the end of the day. A couple quick things when you're doing something uh, on paper, typed presentation that you're going to have with you maybe at a podium. So you're going to be doing this, right? You're going to read. You're going to look up. If you're live, you're going to read. You're going to look up. Print it out. Big print. 16 font or larger, only print about the first two thirds down the page so you're not doing all the way down and giving yourself a double chin, nobody wants that. Double space your sentences so you have room between, maybe if you need to make notes. Triple space your paragraphs or your next thought. Uh, don't carry your sentences from one page to another where you have to flip in the middle, finish your thought, flip the page, and then you go. <clears throat> and the other thing, don't rush, 
I'm going to get back to that, but don't rush. Okay, here come the things that you are physically going to do to help yourself prepare and speak, okay? This is the, this is the big stuff right here. This is, this is the juice. Number one, breathe. Everybody forgets to breathe, and that's why sometimes you get going and then you start to get nervous and shaky. Why does that happen? Because you're forgetting to breathe. I know that sounds crazy, right? It's, it's a reflex. We do it all the time. But when you get nervous, when you start to psych yourself up, everything kind of goes like this, right? Do you ever feel like your shoulders come up like that? And then your voice kind of gets a lot higher and you're doing that kind of thing. If you take deep breaths, and I'm talking about diaphragmatic breathing, that's down here, right? Down here in the, in the chest where the lungs start. That one nice deep breath, oh my gosh, that's going to go such a long way. Before you start, do some deep breathing exercises. If you do yoga, anything that you can do to really help yourself slow down and relax. Because your whole body relaxes. This is a, um, it's like a reflex for your entire body, okay? Um, it, it's really crazy what happens, but you, you tighten up and then you start talking from your throat as opposed to speaking from your diaphragm. I know that sounds a little strange, doesn't it? Talking from your throat kind of sounds like this. It's a little more breathy and a little bit harder to hear. And that's the kind of thing we want to avoid. If you take a deep breath and then you open up your chest, have your shoulders back like mama always taught you, you sound better, you can sound nice and have that full rich voice that you're looking for, okay? So when you're getting ready, Number one, you're going to accept that fear. Where does it come from? What's the worst that can happen? I always say, what is the worst thing that can happen, right? Somebody says you didn't do a great job. They didn't like listening to you. So what? Um, when you're printing it out, large font, double space, complete thoughts. Now, here's a couple tricks from the broadcast world. Number one, kiss. It's not a kiss. It's Keep it simple, stupid, K-I-S-S. -S. When you're preparing your stuff, this is another thing, when you're speaking to your, your audience, you may be talking about something they don't understand. So remember to keep it simple. You can always expand on those thoughts later. And the other thing, when you're doing something that's a speech, think in threes, the same thing. Tell me what you're going to tell me, then tell it to me, and then tell me again. So when I'm going to make a point for you, I want to tell you what the point's going to be. I'm going to tell you the point, and then I'm going to tell it to you again. If you think of how comedians do that, they always tie things together at the end. That's a really great way to do it. Um, also, watch your inflections. Uh, sometimes we have a problem with going up all the time, and we always sound like we're asking a question. You want to sound more authoritative, so you're making a statement. Here's what I'm telling you. You sound like you know what you're talking about. People are more prone to listen. Avoid too many um, helper verbs, like really super serious, like these things that you're using to sort of boost up what you're saying. Just make the statement. If you want more on that, I can had, hand you more on that later. And of course, be knowledgeable, prepared, and practiced. I'm going to look at Mark's question really quickly. When doing a Facebook Live video, what do you do during that weird time when no one is on your video yet or you're waiting for people to come in? Uh, I have that, yeah, when I started the video. How about this? At the very beginning, what I did is I gave you a little bit of an introduction about myself. It wasn't about the topic, but it was just so that you know, hey, Julie, why are you qualified to talk about this? So I'm giving you a little bit about me, or maybe you would talk a little bit about, remember the whole, tell me what you're going to tell me? That's a great place for it. Tell me what you're going to tell me. Today we're talking about public speaking and how it's going to help your business and how you can do your Facebook Lives, how you can maybe do your little things where you go into a, a new listing. Stand in front of the new listing, you've got your camera right there and you just do your quick thing. That one's going to be a little more brief. You don't care if somebody jumps on because they're going to see that one when it posts later. Now, I know a lot of the people are going to see this video after the fact. It's Monday at 1 o'clock. Not everybody's available to watch. So I am using a little bit of fill time, but I'm not too worried about when people are going to jump in or not jump in. It depends. If it's a regular one on your own page, um, 
just beware of the rambling too long before you get to some points thing. That's what I'm going to have to say on, on just keeping it a little bit more simple, but giving yourself about a minute, no more. Okay, when we're getting ready to do our presentation, here's what you're going to do. Visualization. Did you read The Secret? It's a good book if you haven't read it or listened to it on tape. That is a great one because it talks about visualization, picturing the end result. I tell people, picture yourself 10 minutes after you have done your presentation, your speech, or your Facebook Live video, and how great you feel because you're going, wow, I did a good job, and I think my audience really got it, and I think they enjoyed it, and I think I actually got a lot of head nods in the audience, and maybe I'm going to get a new client out of it. Visualize that. Don't visualize this. This is just going to happen organically as you do it. Picture the end result. If you have to go there, close your eyes, think about it, really. And then what am I going to do? Breathe. Okay. Breathing exercises. This is some stuff that can really help you. Raquel, you had asked a little bit about this. Shaking it out. <sighs> Shaking it out. Take some really deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Don't worry about looking silly. It's really fine. Don't worry about what you look like because you're doing this before you do your thing. And then shake it out. I picture all the nerves going out of my fingertips. I shake them out of my body. Tense and release is a good one too. Tense everything in the body one at a time or all at once and then release it. Scrunch up your face, bring your shoulders up, then release it all back down. Sometimes chewing gum before the speech. Please don't do it during the speech. You know how bad that looks. Also, hands. Rub your hands with lotion before. If you have chilly hands, it gets things warmed up. Um, acupressure point right here. If you're feeling a little bit headachy, you can massage that pressure point. Okay, and here we are. Finally, we're going to the go. I'm going fast because I'm at 121, and I don't want you guys to hang on too much longer. What are we going to do? Number one breathe. Number two, find your natural voice. Don't be talking up here all the time because you need to find that natural voice. What do you sound like when you wake up first thing in the morning? Kind of that voice. When you do your om and yoga, that voice. That's your natural voice. Speak from your diaphragm, not from your throat. Speak from the diaphragm. So if your shoulders are back, it's going to be easier for you to do that. I'm not going to do this, but I'm going to tell you to do this. Slow down slow down. It's okay if you have pauses because pauses prevent um, 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 right? It's better to just stop because if you do that, you get your audience's attention. Slow down, pause, take those breaks. It's okay. You're going to hold still and hold on. If you've got a podium and you're nervous, hold on to the podium. Don't white knuckle, but give yourself a place to balance. Use your inflections because nobody wants to hear me if I'm getting on Facebook Live and talking like this because I'm really excited about this topic. It's really fantastic because it sounds like I'm reading something, right? Use your inflection. Make it fun for your audience. Who cares if you sound silly? You sound silly to you. You probably do not sound silly to your audience. Eye contact, if you're speaking to people live, of course, I'm making eye contact here on Facebook. I'm going to look down my notes. I'm going to look back up. Find people in the audience, but don't do the scanning thing. It gets a little weird. Find one person. Just look at them. Talk to them. Smile for about five or ten seconds. When you smile as you speak, you can hear the smile in your voice. It's a technique I use on the phone. When I call you on the phone, I'm going to be smiling because I want you to hear the smile in my voice. And uh, the last but not least you got to fake it till you make it, guys. Fake it till you make it. Convince yourself you can do this. The more times you do it, the better you're going to get. And by, by the way, don't forget to breathe. Hey, Raquel, thank you so much for that really nice comment. You guys, again, if you have any questions after this is over, feel free to reach out to me directly. My email is here. You can pop me an email. Ask me any questions at all. Um, maybe Tyler will have me back to do another Mobile Monday, and we'll talk about preparation for doing your presentation. Have a great Mobile Monday, you guys. I'm Julie Tache. Thanks so much.